time for the mayor jam. Mayo as an institution forms the base of our lives. Whether you spend nine years there or one, the hold Mayo has is equally strong. What is it about a boarding institution that does that? Is it just because we spent our formative years there? The bonds we created? The mini version of an entire world that we experienced, which makes adjusting in the real world such a task for some and while others thrive wonderfully. When we think of our time in Mayo, Our days were packed with extracurricular activities, studies and games that undoubtedly shaped our overall personalities. But there is another undercurrent side that emerges, a side that requires healing, the unspoken side effects of a close-knit community that sometimes creates trauma. Today in the Mayo Jam podcast, we are going to discuss one such place to heal. After all, isn't that the real meaning of sisterhood? To offer support, an accepting ear, and help heal each other. I'm Shruti Bhola, batch of 1999, and I'm going to be your host for today's podcast. Well, the more alumni I chat with, my own batchmates, and way junior batches too, there are so many who choose to distance themselves from their days in Mayo. But why? I'm sure you've experienced that as well. Well, there are a series of reasons, but today we are going to focus on only one, one's own sexuality. Now, as adults, we know, tween to mid-teens is the time when we explore and understand our preferences and nature of sexuality. Yet, if you were passing chits over to the boys' school and were interested in boys, it was wrong. If you were a late bloomer, it was definitely frowned upon by your own peers. And if you liked girls in a girls' school or boys in a boys' school, well, no one ever spoke about it. It didn't exist. So, in this episode, let's talk about it. Also, the timing is just right. After all, it is the Pride Month too. Let's welcome Nafisa Krishna, batch of 2004, an artist, illustrator and writer. Specializing in narrative illustration and comic, her clientele includes Fab India Overseas, Caterpillar Wings, book publication houses like Penguin Random House, Pratham Books and many other foundations and literature festivals. Hi Nafisa, welcome to Mayo Jam Podcast. Thank you for joining us today. Hi, Shruti. Thank you so much for having me here. (laughs) Well, first of all, congratulations. You recently got married. So a big congratulations to you and your wife. How is married life treating you? Have you gotten used to it yet? Um, Thank you, for one. But uh, yeah, it's it's good. See, my wife and I have been living together for three years anyway. So it's not too much difference in terms of the living arrangement. But yeah, it's definitely a new mindset. Um, I think, see, the thing is both of us... um, both of us believe in the institution of marriage, right? Right. So, um, and in India, it's not legal to be married here as a same-sex couple. Right. Um, yeah. So we, what we had was a commitment ceremony and um, our families and of course our friends and stuff were there. And so we did what, what I'd, I'd like to call the old school way in the sense that there's no legal paperwork, like we don't have a certificate or anything like that. But we got married in sort of more in the cultural, traditional sort of sense of the term. Right. And... Right. Uh, but commitment is what you really need. Like if one is committed yeah. to each other, I think that's much bigger than than like, you know, than anything else. So that's wonderful. Yeah, precisely. Precisely. So the thing is like, um, I think that the change for us has been, it's definitely more involved with our families. You know, it's right. not just just the two of us, like it would be for anyone who got married. Right. Um, it's there suddenly you, you, you have a different set of uh, relatives that you'd never, <laughs> never knew you would. Um, yeah. and, uh, you know, more birthdays on the calendar and things like that. But also <laughs> I think, um, just, the I think a lot of people take this for granted perhaps, but for me, it gives me such a s- strong, stable sense because mm-hmm. a, I never thought this was possible. Right. And then I met someone who believed in it the same way as I did. And right. we decided to do this, mm-hmm. um, it's uh, solidified our relationship on a whole different level. I'm really happy that you have found your one and you're happy with the whole arrangement. Yes. And I think that's yes. what really matters with the whole thing. So what year, What years were you in Mayo? Like when did you pass out? Take me through your Mayo life. What was it like? So, okay. So my dad's an old boy. And, oh, okay. nice. uh, and my sister's an old girl. Right. <laughs> so, ah, nice. so basically what happened was... Um, we, I'm, I grew up in Calcutta and my dad works with tea. So we went between, basically between Assam and, and Calcutta. We tra- we lived between the two places a right. lot, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, and when my sister went into the 11th grade, um, we were going to Guwahati and the schools weren't 
my parents didn't think it would be good enough education for her, so they sent her to Mayo, right? Right. And I didn't think I'd end up going, but uh, my grandma felt really sick, and my parents had to transfer back prematurely. So I joined in class eleven uh, in two thousand and two. Wow, that's a but yeah. that's a late class. Not uh, everybody gets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, even if you join school, not everybody accepts new girls at that point in the batch. Yeah, you know, not. Yeah, fr- yeah. Not not in terms of what the school would allow or not, but I mean more as friends and peers. There is a very distinct. Yeah. Oh, we are already a gang, and like you know, there's yes. a new person oh coming God, in eleventh. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh, so you went through that basically, but then did you I bypass did. it nicely? I think so. <laughs> I mean, I think class eleven, class eleven was a little tough for sure. I may, I've made some of my closest friends. So, um, Mayo was honestly, if you ask me to look back, Mayo yeah. was my the best school experience I've ever had. I would repeat it in a heartbeat. I would have joined it earlier. Wow. I mean, you know, like uh, when people ask me now, like, so which school do you go to? I just say Mayo because for me, everything else before that kind of blurs into the. Uh, Background. Correct. Yeah, I absolutely and and that's saying something because you joined right at the last two years of you know your entire sure. schooling, so that's quite For something. Sure. So see today the chat that we're about to have, I know it's not going to be easy. Uh, at least not for me. I I'm trying my level best to make sure that I can make it as easy for you, and specifically and especially you know to come on a public platform and where not just all your batchmates but the entire MCGS alumni community yes. and uh, Mayo Boys, uh, you know Mayo Old Boys Association, they'll also be listening in, and anyone else who's maybe not even you know Mayo centric but is related to the school or comes across the podcast, even they'll be listening in. So yes. I'm, you know, I, right at the onset of this, I just want to assure you that this is a safe space, and our intention is to talk about life and just be there for each other. You know, the support system. So yeah, to begin with, first. and for almost and just be absolutely honest and brutal about this what made you say yes to have this chat and did you have any reservations um i did actually <clears throat> see the thing is um i'm i'm a pretty introverted uh, no one in may will believe that but i swear i'm <laughs> an <laughs> in, in, introverted person uh, and right. I, i i and i'm very private and i keep most of my most of everything to myself right. um but um having okay so i was batch of 2004 i only right. came out as being gay in 2008 okay so i was at the end of my college um and uh, at that time india was still i mean the first reading down of the um uh, you know of of 377 had happened and uh, then of course the following year they sort of retracted it so um we were going through a whole kind of upheaval in the lgbt movement here right, right. and it um we'll go into the the complexities of that later but basically i think there needs to be a change in attitude that people have towards the concept of lgbtqia and i think um visibility is required so if by me um making my story public uh means that people can be a little bit more understanding or right. that um the other other girls and boys out there who are going through similar things find articulation through this mm-hmm. then it's worth giving up that anonymity <laughs> yeah. so to speak um and to come out to i mean the reservations i had honestly was because we are a very 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 big community such across the world Very and true. i'm very i'm very publicly gay in in my own circles at my workspace all of that mm. um obviously like anyone i don't necessarily want to open myself or my family up to any kind of ridicule or any kind of finger pointing or name calling because honestly it's my life uh, right. and obviously yeah. i want i want to protect the people uh, in it yeah um so but i think it's important should be to be very very honest with you because um, having been in boarding school knowing yeah. how uh, our education system generally deals with uh, issues like sexuality uh, right. or gender mm-hmm. i think it's really important to have this conversation yeah 
I absolutely yeah. agree with you. And I think this is the right time to even have this chat because uh, many people, like you said, that, uh, you know, today people are a lot more open to even hearing it out and having, you yeah. know, that discussion than they were earlier on. So I think it's the right time, um, I, if not already delayed, you know, one must yeah. Yeah. have this chat and especially with our school because this is such a hush hush topic. I never heard about it or spoke about it. Even like when people, meet nobody talks about it or addresses it but you yeah. know it exists or it is there or people are subjected to it even if they might be like you know sexuality is something which is just not discussed it's like you don't no, talk about it no. in male circles yeah. so it's it's an important point to like just talk about it so okay so now you recently published an article uh which led you to coming out to your entire batch which is yeah, huge <laughs> when it comes yeah, to Mayo. Because sure. you, you know, you can you can deal with the whole world, but when it comes yeah. to your own batchmates, it's like there is a separate like you know how when uh, well I call other people like commoners, like muggles. Yes, <laughs> other people yes, yes. usually who haven't been to boarding schools, they don't know what it's like. Uh, to have that separate space in your heart and your mind and your entire psychology, basically, for your yeah. boarding friends. And they are as yeah. good as family. And sometimes maybe they have more of an impact on us than even our family. So yeah. how how did that happen? First, tell me about the article and then tell me when you actually did open up to your entire batch. What did you go through? How did your batch take it? T tell me the whole thing, basically. Okay. okay. So, uh -huh. all right. So my wife and I have just moved to London. Yeah. And uh, I'm back in India right now because I'm wrapping up the house and we're taking our cats back. But I was in London when I wrote the article and actually it was a response to an email a friend of my dad had sent me based on a couple of articles that had come out in the newspaper about uh, basically how abysmal the whole um, gay scene is in India because uh, everyone is opposing it and there's lots of religious opposition and there's lots of, you know, whatever. And basically how he was just like, you know, I'm... Uh, I've always lauded you for your courage, but I think you should leave and, you know, be in a place that makes you, that will be safe to you and be accepting to you. And right. that really is what stemmed the, the whole article. Okay. Mm -hmm. So right. it was an, um, I wrote the email in response and I was very grateful for that kind of, that level of concern, but mm -hmm. having been part of this and part of the, the fight, I'd like to call it, but it's, mm -hmm. I, it's not an aggressive thing. It's just an, it's a constant gentle pushback. That's why I made the analogy of the wave um, uh, and tides because right. we've been pushing and pushing now for a while, right? Like I said, I came out in 2008. It's now 2023. Right. Um, you know? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I've been out for like, what? Um, 15 years. Yeah. Like for 15 years now, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, and um, in the 15 years, a lot has happened. And as much yeah. as we have a lot of the um, opposition and naysayers and like haters and whatever. We also have a shit ton of support and a shit ton of people who are finally saying, you know what, as long as you're happy, you get, you should do what you, what, what works for you. Right. You know? Yeah. And um, anyway, so the, what you said about coming out of the batch though is true. I mean, um, I was very resistant to tell anyone in Mayo that I was gay because again, like I said, Back when we were in school, the being gay was a slur. You know, mm. we we mm. it around like a slur, right. and we are kids. We didn't know better. We you don't yeah. you don't actually um, uh, personalize it or put it into context. Yeah. Um, and it would be a slur even when you went to college, right? Because oh, you're all girls school, oh, let's go, you know, and you're just like yeah. True, we all heard that. You're right. Yeah, we all heard it everywhere. Yeah. Okay, and yeah. and that's the general consensus. Even now, people are like, oh, all girls boarding school. We know what you guys said. Like, yeah. Shut up. yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, uh, when when I came out, I I remember those things, right? And coming out for me was hard, um, yeah. as it is for anyone who is gay. By the way, yeah. for people yeah. out there, it's not a, it's not a, this um, helding thing. We all fight it because uh, the the norm that we have been shown is a different picture from what we feel. So invariably, we're just like, please let this not be me. Hmm. Please let this not be me. I don't want this. Please let this just be a one-time thing. Please let this just, maybe I'm just like confused or something. Like, you know, like hmm. that. that's what you say. So when I, I, it took me like almost like the better half of three years, three and a half years to accept myself. 
mm-hmm. right and i yeah. couldn't and at that point in time i was sort of facing a lot of a lot of backlash from everyone in my life friends family and stuff as well so um i just couldn't i couldn't bear getting it from mayo as well so i just right. i actually cut myself off mm-hmm. from all my mayo friends and everything mm. i just literally went off the radar and that was it and um, later i got back in touch with one of my friends and then another and i came out to them and they were like yeah but you know it's cool like why would you think it would be a problem and so then i felt safe space in just those two people you know so then i was right. like okay i'm, I'm not going to tell anyone i'm not going to and yeah. this is fine i don't need i don't need uh, you know you you convince yourself that you because you're afraid of being hurt you mm-hmm. convince yourself that if you shut the door it won't hurt you and the other side uh, you know will forget you existed Yeah. So for me it was it was a it was a lot like that. Um and actually when I went to one, one of these friends actually when I went to for her wedding I met a bunch of other people uh, a bunch of other batchmates there right? right and um and I was really hesitant I'm like my heart is in my mouth because everyone was either already married or having their babies or had had babies or you know whatever yeah. and uh, and uh, and this was back what in 2018 2019 Yeah, one side there's judgment, one is self-judging, yeah. then you're fearing the judgment that's going to come from friends and what if they find yeah. found yeah. out? Yeah, there's there's that's it's avoided, very pressurizing. I've, I've I've avoided going to any alumni meet, any yeah. uh any sort of get together or anything because I was just like no no and I convinced myself that it's good because I don't mm. I don't need that. I don't need that assuming that there will be ridicule, I right. don't need it. offensive in defense yeah i don't, I don't correct it, right? yeah so when i went for yeah, uh, yeah. when i went for uh, this friend's wedding i met a bunch of people there and obviously everyone wants to know how you're doing and it, and i came out as being gay and they were all it was like not even a thing right or like oh how cool yeah okay by the way you know and you're just sort of carrying on the conversation <laughs> so i was like i was a sense of relief that's so typical of me yeah. <laughs> that was a sense of relief yeah. seeing which i was a very small group as well as in these are people who i i would be shocked if there had been any level of um homophobia over there uh and i yeah. i understand that and this band of friends of mine very similar backgrounds and things so whatever still holding back from my mm. back Anyway, back to London, and I yeah. and I put this article out there, and my dad actually was the one who said, you know, Nafisa, you should publish this on Medium. Oh wow! So so your parents were very supportive through and through, and they were good. They, they they were okay with you, and when you came out to them, they were fine. I'm assuming from the conversation. N- n- no, they weren't. Oh. They they we we worked a lot. Um, right. Uh, but my parents are completely very very supportive of me right now, and and. They That's are, wonderful. Uh, okay. Yeah, you know we've we've all come a long way. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah. but my dad is like I think you should because it's very strongly articulated, right. and I know I have a very strong command of the language. This is something I'm very proud of. <laughs> the, I I agree because I have read the article, and in case people are listening in, you want to read the article. I'm going to link it in the write up of the podcast, so you'll be able to go there, click it, and also read it. Uh, that's fine with you, Nafisa. I hope. for me to link the article yeah that's absolutely fine yeah i'll do that yeah yeah that's okay, absolutely great fine. sorry please continue yeah so when uh, so my dad was like i think you should because again having right. been in boarding he was in boarding school his entire life like uh, he was put into mayo in class at that point class 3 and he did his entire uh, entire school wow, in mayo yeah. right and this is back in the wow. 60s okay so uh, he's like i don't understand how it could help with articulation so i put it out there and i sent it to friends a little luck and did not send it to mail and we have an alumni group on whatsapp i'm pretty sure everyone else does as well but our batch has an alumni group on whatsapp right yeah 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 so i literally heart in mouth not kidding i put the link on the alumni group and i in uh, like you said offensively defensive way i was like this uh for you blah, 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 blah. <laughs> you know like uh, this is something i wrote um, you know blah, blah blah and and i put it out there And then I put my phone down and I put it on silent because I didn't want to. Know. <laughs> I didn't want to, didn't want to face the aftermath of it. <laughs> yeah, no, I didn't. Know. I was like, it's fine, it's fine. Yeah. Um, uh, heart and mouth, right? Yeah. And so I go to the kitchen, I wash up a dish, and then I'm like, okay, let me just go and see. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I opened it, and actually, Divya was the first person who had responded, and she's like, this is amazing, this is so powerfully written, and like kudos and things like that. Mm-hmm. and then after that it was like an opening of a floodgate because i think there are about 120 of us on that group if i'm not mistaken yeah. um it was like opening of a floodgate i kid you not <laughs> the response like i'm getting goosebumps now again the the responses that came 
in was I just wept and wept and wept because it was a a, a gaping wound that was healed wow. so beautifully. Mm. Yeah. Uh, because my batchmates were super supportive and just like, oh my God, this is amazing. And so I put up pictures of my wedding and they were like, oh my God, it looks amazing. You guys are having so much fun and you guys make such a cute couple. Mm-hmm. And it healed something in me that had been raw for a very long time. Yeah. yeah. You know, and, and I think what was nice is like, I don't know. I don't know if I can turn on right now and say back in 2008 up Mm. or had I known I was gay in school if I told anyone would they have had this response I'm not sure we were young and we were influenced by whatever we were told was being is right and wrong so I don't know but the fact that everyone right now as independent adults came forward to be like this is amazing and congratulations and I'm so sorry that you felt so alone and I wish you had reached out or you know that we're here and or like wow Nafisa you've put it in like you you put a face to what's going on because the Supreme Court hearings were going on at that time for legalizing same-sex marriage, right? right. So um, a couple of my batchmates are lawyers and they were just like, you know, we know what's going on, mm-hmm. but we're not pa- actively part of it. And but and so it was, it's more like educational or it's more academic, but now you put a face to it. Like this, this affects someone we know, Yeah, you know, the outcome of this will affect someone we know. Mm. And uh, that makes it so much more real. And I think that's really it, isn't it? When, that's when it very important. Anything, that's, yeah. That's, I think, one of the most powerful things because it's true. Yeah. Uh, I might be for or against it or whatever, but if it's somebody getting affected who's in my inner circle or even, you know, yeah. one or two people removed in my inner closed people, it affects me directly it, and personally. Yeah it's, yeah, it's someone you know. Yeah. You can put a face to this entire scenario. Correct. So honestly, that that is also one of the reasons I decided to do this podcast because Put a face to it. Right. Put a voice to it. It's not something that's happening outside your house. People that make no difference to your life. Right. It's happening to people you've grown up with. Right. People who you've been in school with. Yeah. Who your kids have been in school with. Yeah. Um, you know, friends of yours. And it's it's our life. It's not just... Because a lot of people I know, we hear it, especially from uh, the older communities and the uh, older generation saying... Oh, you know, it's such a Western trend. It's not. Hmm. It's not a Western trend. It's human. Yeah. And and it's my life. Yeah. You, you know, by telling me I'm 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 wrong, or by telling me that I'm uh, I don't know what I'm thinking, you're denying me my family. You're denying me my life. Yeah. Also, I'd like to add here that you know, being gay is not an abnormal thing. Right. Okay. Because uh, a lot of the times you get asked, like, why can't you be normal? Or you think to yourself when you're when you when you sort of just yeah. coming out that. Uh, why aren't I normal, you know? And uh, and you are. Being gay uh, isn't any different from being straight. It mm. might not be a majority, but it's no different. And that's important to remember because, you know, a, a lot of the reactions mm. we got when we sort of said we were getting married, um, both from the gay community and the straight, I will say, um, is to that. Why would you get married? There are no legal benefits you get from this. Uh, so why would you? I must do this. But then my question always was, why Why did you get married as uh, a heterosexual person or um, or someone who's been married for many, many years? Why did you do it? And to pull up the thing of like, oh, it's, I mean, for us, it's, yeah. it's, a, it's a cultural thing. It is right. for me as well. I'm also Indian. My wife is also Indian. You know, for us, uh, being married, having a family, having our own partnership, having our own unit is as much a part of our lives and our culture as it is yeah. yours. I want a family too. I want my own unit. I want uh, my spouse and uh, our kids. And um, yeah. just because my family mm. looks different from yours, that's an invalidated is what I want to say. It just just because we look mm. different, it's not invalidated. I mean, I, I think that's something that we we feel fairly strong about, especially since this sort of came up in the Supreme Court as well about marital rights and why why should we fight for it if it's if it yeah. like I said if you're if if hmm. you're already living your life the way you are and it goes against uh, I don't know our culture it doesn't being married yeah. being uh, having your own unit it right. doesn't go against anyone's culture there has to be room for difference there has to be room for things that don't necessarily look like you you know just because if we don't look like you doesn't mean we are not the same or we don't have the same yeah. dreams and the same wishes. So, yeah, when I met my wife and we decided this is something we wanted to do, it was very much 
it was a natural progression as it would be for anyone else. Yeah. The natural progression was we, mm-hmm. we met, we fell in love, we got together, we lived together, we want to get married, we want to have kids. It's as natural for me as it is for you. Mm-hmm. And uh, that needs to be remembered. And that needs to be treated in the same respect or with the same outlook and the same sort of uh, empathy, kindness, and understanding that you would for any anyone yeah. else who's heterosexual who is also getting married or uh, who's also in a partnership or who's also beginning a family. There is no difference. Um, and that's important to remember. It's uh, easy to sort of sway with the whole thing of it right. being, I don't know, a trend, but it's not. Uh, like I said in my article, it's my life. By denying yeah. me my family, by denying me my spouse, by denying me my partnership, mm. um, you're asking me to lead a compromised life. And why should I do that? Also, for what? Who who am I threatening by having my family and by having my, my unit? How is that such a threat? Um, and that needs to be remembered. So when people are sort of talking about this or thinking about this, think of it from a, a space of just you. Put yourself in the position. Right. Be be that understanding to yourself. Look at your own family unit. Would you want to be without them? I don't want to be without mine, you know? And um, yeah. yeah, that's what it comes down to. Yeah. But tell me something. In school, did you know you were gay? Or you were, didn't question it or you never explored that within your own system and within your own mind? No, I was seen a guy. <laughs> I was in school. See so, that? Um... Okay, so this gets me to my next question. Because boarding life and, you know, the peer pressure that we face from all around us, it often leads us to go with the crowd. Uh, sometimes at the cost of ignoring our own authenticity, sometimes not even questioning it. Just because everybody yeah. is doing it, we go with it. And we're like, okay, fine. Yeah. You know, that's how it is supposed to be. So how did that happen to you? You were seeing a guy and your friends knew about it and you were there and yes, you were probably in a happy relationship with the person exactly. or however happy in yeah. school one yeah. can yeah. be. Yeah, I mean, it's cool. yeah, <laughs> you know, and it was all very rebellious because he was male boys and oh my God. Um, so there was all of that. <laughs> that Chit passing and all that across the yes, board. Yes, yes, all that of kind. that. Uh, <laughs> brothers meet, sisters meet, that one kind. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, sure, all of that, all of that did go on. Um, and... Um, but also, nobody wants to get in trouble, know, right? Like, you don't want to get into trouble. When, so so you started questioning it only when you came to college. I didn't even question it in college. Oh. I didn't even question it in college. I'll literally tell you my whole trajectory. Basically, I was in, I was in school, seen a guy, we broke up, whatever, it's fine. Uh, you move on. Uh, I joined design school. I was in Bangalore, met a bunch of friends. All of that was fine. I, I've known gay people my whole life one of my my one of my elder sister's best friends is gay she's married to her partner they live in the states she's married to her partner they have two kids right. so this is not something that was an anomaly in my right. life it's not something that i didn't know of and even in school i was never like oh i'm like i'm homophobic or i'm anti people who want to be with each other i i'm i was like yeah whatever it's your life and do what you yeah. want um, but we, like I said, we know what happens in boarding schools and uh, actually it's one of the things that we don't like talking about or like touching upon. So if anything, you know, uh, if people were, were thought of becoming too close with each other, they were put into separate houses, they were put in separate dormitories, you know, it's like, uh, even if there was nothing there sexually, yeah. you know, because, uh, the, and the faculty or the, or the, um, general, because they're responsible for us. Yeah. So they're just like, we don't want to get into this, uh, because it will come down to being how we raise them badly. Right. And so, and that was like across the board, across every body. Yeah. In fact, I think in, as girls, we had it a little easier with the boys. Really? Are you serious? Like it's worse. In, and I've uh, met, uh, boys now in the KK community. Oh, terrible. It's terrible because it's the madrangi mm. and it's the like, you have to be so male and you have to prove yourself to be alpha right. and all this crap that goes on, you know, and uh, it's toxic as hell because basically you're telling this, imagine a 13 year old boy or a 14 year old boy unsure of what he's feeling, having to put on this mask and this like front because I'm like, I'm, you know, like it's, right. it's this toxic masculinity. It, it comes down there, you know, where they're just like, we can't because if we, if we so much as say that mm. I might like, mm. do you know the shit? I mean, yeah. of course you know the yeah. shit that they say to boys. They say it openly mm. now, you know, and I, I, being a part of the gay community, we brush it off and we own things like the term queer who used to be used as a, yeah. as an insult, right? Back in the sixties and things being queer meant, um, 
being and our equivalent yeah. of that was is calling people chakka right. you know it's like it's, right. it's terrible it's terrible because these are people we're talking about you know and um, and you don't want that now the queer community has has we've sort of um we've reclaimed the right. word so now we wear it really proudly on our sleeves like yeah we're queer yeah yeah you know <laughs> so what kind of thing yeah it's about changing the narrative because at the yeah, end it of is. it that's all that it is yeah it's a perception yeah, it that is. somebody has you know put across and you change the narrative and you own it yeah correct yeah and um, it it happens in some places it doesn't in others and uh, we you know every indian language is very literal right if, if, i mean no matter how many yeah. languages you speak you know that english is almost just peripheral in comparison to how direct we can get in any indian language right absolutely so when you insult yeah. someone in in hindi or in punjabi or in bengali or whatever it really hits hmm it yeah. really hits you know and so people you know you don't really say anything personally for hmm. me i was i i joined college i was actually seeing a guy in college as well and in very serious relationship and things like that right. and um i was very heartbroken when we broke up blah 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 and then i met actually this the person i was dating the first time around the first girl i was dating was had been a friend of mine i mean she knew she was gay already so it's so weird to say um so anyway when we started seeing each other it made so much sense to me um yeah. it's like all the all the chips finally fell into place and mm. all the sort of you felt comfortable was, yes my god yeah. I, i find i felt free okay and yeah. uh, and i didn't understand it it scared the crap out of me oh okay, okay. yeah because so you were like, so you were comfortable but you were scared of being that relaxed and natural yes because i was just like no no this is not the picture the mm. picture we are all given the picture we all make you know you you um, meet a guy and you or whatever and you you get married and you have kids and you that picture it it looked it suddenly was really different and this is the picture we've grown up with you know yeah. it's not like a picture that came to me it's just something you've already grown up with and um, right. i didn't want to rock that boat i was yeah. also like and i could see the hate that was around right i mean when mm. i came out i didn't expect my family to take it as badly as they did <laughs> uh, oh. because they had they had been they had been okay again with friends who were gay and things like that so uh, i think now as an adult i can look back at it and be like yeah i, I get it from your perspective it is different yeah. when it's one of your own it yeah. their their sort of reaction didn't only come from not understanding but also from protection right they were just like Correct. hell no yeah. you know like what the hell like, life is so hard as it is why are you making it freaking hard for yourself you yeah. know yeah yeah and since i'd been with uh, boys before my um, my family were very open my family they knew i was dating a guy and all that for they were just like okay maybe this is just reaction okay maybe this is just Um, maybe it's a phase finish, yeah maybe it's a phase maybe it's, maybe it's because you're finishing college and you don't know what the future is going to hold right. um, all of that and i remember sitting one on one such um, confrontational conversation with my family i was sitting on the sofa and they were sitting there and they were talking to me talking to me talking to me it was like an out of body experience because i'm looking at myself and i'm listening and i'm listening to my parents and i i go with what my parents say because again they've never ever done things or said things like just for the sake of it it's always been with our best interests in heart with like to protect us to look out for yeah. us it's you know even yeah. if it meant them questioning their own um their own sort of beliefs and things they've done it if it meant keeping us safe right Correct. so uh when they said look listen we honestly think this is a reactionary thing and you're making a really big mistake mm. don't do that because it's a mistake you can't undo if you put your put a label to yourself you're never going to be able to take it back mm. and i think for the first time in my entire life i looked at these people and i was like we're not speaking the same language yeah yeah and i've never faced that with my family because we are very very close mm. we're very communicative communication is our thing man we talk till we're dead like till we were dead seriously <laughs> uh, but uh, at this point i was listening to them and i was like wow they don't then because there was something in me was just deeply hanging on to it so strongly like i want to go with what you're saying but i can't because this feels right yeah. this feels more right than anything else has yeah. and i couldn't communicate that to them i didn't have the words to articulate it because everything that they said had a very strong uh, i mean it was a point right yeah. I, it was transitionary time in life i had dated guys before uh, you know life was starting completely afresh i'm 
all of this mm-hmm. i didn't i hadn't seen this happening before so you know maybe it's not re- yeah. only now mm-hmm. 15 years later just understanding the concept of sexuality and gender identity and how fluid it can be or how wide it can be mm-hmm. can i stand up for who i was when i was 24 but at 24 all i knew is what i was feeling yeah Correct. i didn't know anything else yeah, yeah. right so uh, i couldn't defend that because i just kept saying but this feels right and they're like yeah what is feeling correct yeah, correct yeah you're not thinking yeah, straight yeah. at this yeah. point but what helped then what helped bridge that gap and actually helped you communicate better did you guys have to go to a counselor or a therapist did you guys have to in, you know ask for or just did time you know did did its thing and helped you guys heal and have acceptance towards each other what worked um honestly um we did we worked really hard at it i right. think uh, for the first three years i didn't want to publicly come out yeah. because my i knew my parents were not okay with it right. I mean, my family was not my sisters weren't okay with it either and i didn't want till they were okay i don't really care about the rest of the world right. okay of if course. you you don't like my choice doesn't make a difference to my life right however i don't want i don't ever want my family being hurt right absolutely so my whole thing was like um till they're okay with it i'm not going to actually be public about this right. at all right right and anyway those so those three years were cumulative for multiple reasons i was questioning it but i was also trying really hard to just communicate with my family correct and yeah. we went we went through all the basics literally from mm. like anger disbelief um uh denial all of it we did the whole lot but we what we didn't ever do we didn't stop talking right and that was really important hmm. because you know what it came down to so when you ask my parents now they'll tell you if you can't change the tide then flow with it hmm okay yeah. if you can't i mean if this person if there's someone in your life who's telling you i feel this very strongly or i'm i'm going through this don't deny it because mm. that's not going to make it go away yeah. and that's not going to help but just keep the communication open if you don't understand it like you can be like i don't understand your choice in life right now in a pizza and i can be like that's fine as long as you're open to conversation correct as long as you're open to um discourse even I'll, and i'll use the word discourse mm. because it's it's not as aggressive as fighting Hmm. we can have separate opinions yeah. but you need to have room in yours that there is that i have an opinion and i need to have room in mind that you have one as well correct yeah and to just my, be patiently my, we need to listen i think that's the yeah, that's where it begins yeah i think one of the big breakthroughs we went, made 2 3 years into it was when i sat my parents down and i was like you know what let's agree to disagree hmm let's just agree to disagree okay yeah. because maybe this is something you will never accept maybe this is something that uh you know we'll never agree on it, on any front right uh but this is not something i can ignore either right this is not something that i can pretend doesn't exist correct so let's agree to disagree hmm. and uh, but know that i'm still your daughter yeah you're still my mother and you're still my father and the relationship we share is the same the way we talk what we bond on what we don't bond on what we banter about all of that stays the same hmm. i haven't changed as a person hmm. it's just this one aspect of my life that we don't agree on that was a tough one to come to but i'm glad we did because uh they were literally at the point where they were like what if we never accepted would hmm. you be able to live with that hmm. and for the most part up until that point i was like no but then i was like you know what yes because i'm as as more time passes i'm more and more sure of who i am and also you're maturing like you were already in your mid 20s yeah. so you know you were already yeah. at that point where you were mature enough to understand the complexity of the emotion theirs and yours and how it's moving yeah. forward like i'm just while listening yeah. to you talk i'm thinking about someone who would be going through this in say 8th standard or 10th standard you know when yeah, they're still in school like that's it's it's quite something and then it in becomes fact, a thing that, that's the the umbrella yeah. that's used at that point like especially with boarding schools and i'm rooting it back because th- that's where this comes from yeah. where you're like of course you'll be attracted to one of your friends or your classmates because it's like 900 of you in one school for 9 months of a year so obviously but it's not real mm. i'm like okay you're right attraction happens we're all hitting like all hitting puberty you're all sort of exploring and experimenting yeah. for some it might be an experiment but for others it's not yeah. and to dismiss it mm. or brush it on the carpet and be like no no that's not right because again you're confusing an already confused child who's feeling damn lonely yeah. in the head mm. you know because think about it okay when we were in school 
even today, if you go back to any school, uh, to like class eight, class nine, and uh, or younger class seven, hmm. and you talk to them, they're not going to actually know this wider gay world exists. It's when you hit college and you uh, right. um, out in the open and you're seeing lots of things happening. They're like, oh, there's pride. Oh, there are other gay people or whatever. Hmm. But in school, you're the one person in your batch, or there are two people, and you're just like, crap. What 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 went wrong with me? Yeah. Why was I born like this? And at that point, normal. Correct, and nobody is there to help you at that point. So actually, this is the perfect spot where I want to ask the next question. Where, uh, you know, when we were in school, we didn't have any, at least in my time, and I was batch of 99, we didn't have any counselors yeah. as such or someone to guide us or help us, especially with sex education. And, uh, yeah. you know, talking about all this is far off. In fact, during my time, our matrons and house mistresses took you know, took on that role. Uh, so you yeah. are way junior to me. So I don't know during your, your time, did you guys have any counselors? And I don't mean career counselors. I mean like sex ed. Yeah, no. And and that uh, that's that's common to all the schools I've been in. Yeah, this is not just a mere thing. No one in any school in India at that point in time was in sex education. Right. Maybe one of the more alternative schools or maybe, I don't know. But I know in the school, the education system that I was in, there was none of that. Right. But do you think that if there was such a thing, that in some sort of a way, it would have helped? Um, it, it wasn't until much later that you began to question these things way post, you know, college for you. But for, for yeah. children who are in school or who are going through something, do you suppose like in what way can this be made better? In what way can it be helpful? Like I'm sure because you actively are going through something like this, dealing with the world, you know, kind of standing, constantly feeling that you're standing against it and you have to justify your stance. I'm sure you think about these things. So in what way do you suppose can it help the boarding school situation all over the country? I think I've, I think Divijana has spoken about this at, uh, at one point, um, just about alternative lifestyles. Okay, so this doesn't necessarily have to mean uh, sexuality. It can also mean career choices. It can also mean as something as, as, as um, simple and not mm. simple as taking a gap year after right. school to figure right. out what you want to do, right? Yeah. I think there needs to be support where, see, we grow up in boarding school, okay? Yeah. That's your formative years, your dorm, your friends, your class, your choice of subject. I'm going to quote something that's actually written in the Bible that yeah. people misquote a lot, okay? Mm. Uh, we say blood is thicker than water. Mm. And at the moment, that's sort of taken to be that, uh, you know, your blood bonds are stronger than um, anything else that comes mm. outside blood. It's not actually true. The actual quote is the blood of the covenant is thicker than the water of the womb, which basically means your your family of choice, mm. the people you choose to keep in your life, that bond, because you're making it out of choice and you choose it every single day, yeah. is much stronger than the water of the womb, i.e. the blood of the family. Wow. That completely changes the entire meaning to absolute opposite yeah, it of it, in fact. <laughs> yeah. 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 So and and in the gay community, uh, a family of choice is a very it's a it's a very strong concept. It's mm. one that I didn't necessarily understand or align to myself for the longest time because I because of how close I am to my family and I was like, nothing can be closer than that. Right. And actually think about it. The people you choose to have in your family. If you look at your own life right now, yeah. you look at your partner, you look at your uh, best friend, you look at um, who is the person you call up when you're either stressed or angry or um, going through something uh, of celebration. Who's the first? The, it's never only like, oh, I'm going to call my parents and tell them. It's just like, oh, I have to call so-and-so and I have yeah. to tell this person. And, I have to, and those yeah. are the people you choose every day. You choose to have them in your life. You work on that relationship more than any other relationship because it's one you choose every day when you wake up, you choose it. Correct. You know, yep, and yep. Um, and that is what boarding school is as well, right? Like yep. when we, we are in, when we're in boarding school, this is our reality. The reality yep. is the person sleeping on the bed next to you, the one you're going bunking games with in the cupboard, the one you're, <laughs> um, uh, you, you know, like hanging out with or pouring your heart out to, yep. right? It's, yeah. It's our absolute unmasked selves, our real selves, yeah. which today, even till date, when we meet those friends, you know, they look at you and they haven't met you in 20 years and they'll suddenly look but at they you know and say, you. why yeah. are you being fake? You know, where's the real yeah, you? Yeah, they are can you fine? see you. They can see you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they yeah. see you, You're right? You know, yeah. and uh, and you can't and you can't avoid it even if you want to because it's your everyday. You're in boarding school for yeah. nine months of the year, every single day. These are the people who 
you know, who see you when you're sick, who see you when you're well, who see you when you're going through a stressful breakdown, whatever, you know? Yeah. And yeah. Um, I think, I feel very strongly about this. I think there needs to be uh, an adult, hmm. right? And I'm going to use that word because when we're in school and we're in class 11 and 12, because we're the senior most, we hmm. end up thinking, oh, <laughs> we have so we're adults. arrived. <laughs> we're we got adults. it. <laughs> we know our life. Oh my God. I'm like, actually, we don't. Yeah, we don't. Okay. And uh, you can look it back and look back at it in retrospect. And, and especially in a place like me where you're calling your seniors B, right? Yeah. So it, it's, a, it's a whole like you're, you're giving them an adult stance like, I'm so much older than you. I, I so know everything, right? <laughs> uh, but there has to be an a place where someone can talk to an adult without feeling afraid. Yeah. And I don't think this is this is this is not against any particular school or mm. uh, definitely not against Mayo. Um, but kids don't feel safe. Yeah. Enough to yeah. talk about things that's really bothering them. Okay. Great. So it can be mental health related. Mm -hmm. It can be education related and not being able to understand something. Yeah. It can be a life choice thing that you're making. Yeah. There has to be a safe space where you can go and talk and it's not driven by fear. Unfortunately, uh, most of our education system is is fear driven. Yeah, it is. It's the truth. I mean, Correct. it's like, I, uh, you know, you're, you're afraid of the punishment you will receive and therefore you don't do something. Correct. You know, and yeah. uh, that shouldn't that shouldn't be it. it. There should be a space where someone can come and talk and be like, "This is what I'm feeling, and I'm so messed up in my head right now because I really do not want to feel it." Yeah. You know, yeah. and know that once I walk out of that room, this is not going to become a staff room conversation or a, a classroom conversation elsewhere. Yeah, or it will not become gossip. Yeah. And yeah. you, you have that within your friends. Think about it. Okay. Think about the friends you had when you were a male. You know yeah. that within your like a group of like three, four people or eight, 10 people, however many friends you might have had at the time, your inner circle, you knew no matter what you said to them, it was never going to go out. Yeah, of because course. That, I mean, loyalty is such a strong thing. If nothing else, Mayo teaches you loyalty. Man. Oh, until uh, so like, date, till date that continues. <laughs> till date, <laughs> yeah. till date. So, um, we judge yeah, others. So like, Every person till yes. date I have met in my life. The thing is, oh, but you're you're not as good as my male friend. So I'm sorry, you don't deserve a place in my life. You, you know, <laughs> the, the standard we have for people in our life based on the standard we created and experienced in Mayo, that's really high. And that's wonderful because, you know, that is the standard that everybody should be put to. But I wish we had the same thing in relationships because nobody teaches you how to yeah. be in a relationship, you know? Yeah, so, no yeah. one does, you know? Yeah. I remember when I joined school, uh, I don't remember who was telling me, but someone was saying the rules are very clear, okay, in terms the loyalty it's your friends first your dorm your house your batch your school that you don't <laughs> wow break that <laughs> you don't break it no so matter, true. even if you don't agree to something that's being done if the batch is standing up you shut up and stand yeah, up don't be a snitch <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah and and uh, but you we need to be able to have that same loyalty that same fierce loyalty yeah um uh, like if if we get people put into schools and I, and I I cannot I cannot talk from the perspective of a faculty member because I don't know what it's like to be a, a house mistress or a matron or a yeah. class teacher of uh, a bunch of girls who who you, you're also staying in school and you know you're on the same time as them and there's no sort of outside world for you so to speak yeah and uh, I don't know how taxing that can be I'm sure it is okay for yeah. sure yeah but there has to be a safe space adult that you can go to and talk to and know that it's okay. It yeah. is okay. It yeah. is okay. <laughs> it's okay to be like, you know what, I'm being made to do a take the science stream because I've been told that that's what I have to do and I hate it. Mm -hmm. You have to be able to say it without thinking shit is going to go back to my parents somehow and then I'm going to get screwed for this. Yeah. Yeah. You know, or yeah. like, uh, I want to be an actor. I don't want to do academia ever. I know this sounds like really that's not really a thing, but it is. It is for so many kids. It's a thing. No, it's huge. You it's know? huge. If I if I had that kind of person or if that kind of therapist or somebody, some adult, like you rightly said, if someone like that was there who I could have gone to, I think I would have been a much freer yeah. person because there are many things I held on to because of which 10 years after school, I did not connect with anybody. It's only now 
that I am, you know, I'm an adult, a proper adult, a grown up who can deal with her own emotions that now I've begun to connect back with yes. school. So I had my own set of issues, which if they were dealt with right there and then in school, I think it I would have been very good for it. So I'm fully with no, you. I, I agree. I yeah. completely agree. Because the thing is that, so I have um, I know mental health has become something that uh, we are talking a lot more about in, in today's world. Correct. And that wasn't talked about so much before. Yeah. But I'm I, like, I was, I've told you guys this before. I was diagnosed with anxiety disorder in, in 2011. And even back in 2011, it was still like a hush hush thing and you didn't talk about it. Mm. And now I can say it and I can be like, look, these are my needs. I'm, mm. I'm, I, I'm sorry, I come to the table with some some particular needs, but these are things I can do and I can't do, and these are my trigger points. Right. So I will, I I I can look out for myself, and I can uh, make sure that if I'm in a particularly stressful scenario or I feel that I'm I'm going through something, I can either vocalize it yeah. or I can step away. When you're mm. a child and you have a panic attack or mm. you have an anxiety attack and uh, you don't know what the hell is going on mm. and someone says like grow up or it, it's not real or it's in your head mm. you start thinking you're crazy yeah right yeah and there has to be an adult space or someone you can go to at that point to be like i'm freaking out right now mm. you know mm. and i i know this because i had a really nice hm my mm. hm was really really great and we could go and talk to her about anything yeah and we did. Mm. She never addressed us from the perspective of just being a teacher or being like, you know, because there's also that us versus them thing that happens in school when it comes to faculty. <laughs> yeah. and Correct. Yes. It was never like that. Mm. She was. She was very real. She was very much like, and of course, she used to stay in in the house, right? So she'd yeah. invite us into her living room and we we talk if there was a particular stressful scenario. And it'd be fine. Actually, weirdly enough, mm. and I don't know how many people <laughs> mm. will believe this, I actually found uh, Ma'am Jay Singh to be the same. For me, uh, my grandma passed away when I was in school and I actually, I was in a, a wreck mm. and I couldn't go back home because my parents were in, um, in a farm. By the time I got home, it would have been too difficult and all of that. So I, uh, I actually went to her mm. and I sat in her office and I said, I really need to speak to my father. And she mm. said, sure. And she mm. called my dad. And we spoke for a bit and then I sat in the office and I wept and wept and wept. And she Aww. said, what, what can I do? And I was mm. like, I need to go to church. Mm. And she said, okay, I will pick you up mm. from your house tomorrow morning and we will go to church. Oh, that's wonderful. That's such a it wonderful, was amazing. wow. It was amazing. And how many girls would actually walk up to the principal and say something like that? So that's also kudos to you. Because it's something, no, you, you know, yeah, because I know that a lot, I think I'd say 95% of all the girls would be too fearful to even like uh, say, oh, but I can't do that. But that's out of bounds. But if I do that, what if, Yeah. you know? Yeah. So, yeah, so you're right. Yeah. But I think that attitude itself needs to change. Like whether exactly. it's, it's, it's a two-way thing, okay? It comes from the faculty, it also comes from the student. But we have yeah. to have a safe space where... Yeah. A, a child and I'm going to mm. refer to this as a child to the greater populace who's listening to this because we are children when we are in school till you're yeah. 17 you are a child you cannot mm. turn around and expect adult decisions and adult reactions from someone who's 17 who has never seen the world and the yeah. main the whole whole of the world comprised of school and home mm. Correct. you know in fact in boarding schools we're even more sheltered than people who are in day schools because we don't interact with the outside world at all you interact with the same people every day. Yeah, yeah. we're on a planet of our own. Yes, so, um, exactly. <laughs> then there needs to be yeah. a safe space where where a child can go and talk and know that it's okay that I can do this. I can honestly hmm. sometimes it's not even like you need counseling. You just need to let it out. <laughs> yeah. You know, <laughs> correct. I mean, I'm all I'm I'm for having a counselor in school. I think that that's really important. For yeah. Sure. Yeah. Uh, and a place where you can talk one on one because. Um, when you're in a batch, say you have a, like a sex ed class and the mm. whole batch is sitting together, you're all again doing bravado, sniggering, sniveling. No one's actually... Everyone's just chilling. Nobody, yeah, nobody's yeah. taking it seriously. Correct. Yeah. And if you say anything that it seems out of line, someone will call you something, else, whatever. So you, you yeah. know, it's, it's... But there has to be a space where if a child needs to go and ask, like, am I normal? Hmm. They need to have that. And for yeah. that, you need dedicated practitioners, people who have who work in the field. It can't just be like, oh, uh, this person has a, has a, has a, I don't know, background in career counseling and therefore can double up. No, no doubling no. up. You yeah. need a proper therapist. 
you need yeah. a psychotherapist in a boarding school because right. kids go through all kinds of transitions and all kinds of life alterations and they need a safe space to be able to tell them that it's okay that they're right. all right that growing up is hard and that is okay you know i've 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 now been in therapy for on and off since 2011 but i mean for the last 4 years it's been continuous literally every right, week right, right? Uh, but i um, and it's it's amazing yeah. it's horrible <laughs> in one level because you're like you're sort of uh, having to uh, dig out things that you don't necessarily want to address or something that you've buried because it's traumatic mm. or whatever but it's important i i i genuinely mm. wonder had i had this access to this when i was in school when my panic attacks and all it originally started mm. would i be better equipped today yeah. at 38 yeah. would i be handling life better right now would it be would i be less hard on myself right yeah. now had i had access to it mm. earlier when someone could tell me that you know what it's all mm. right that it's okay to have a panic attack breathe through it these are coping mechanisms yeah. these are coping mechanisms for anxiety right. these are coping mechanisms for life not just like man up shut up police state this <laughs> you know you're better than this you're stronger than this yeah. you're, those are those are detrimental statements correct correct like with time these things change you know all the questions i had in my mind i think so, uh, somewhere or the other we've like covered everything which i'm so happy about <laughs> i'm so happy about that but definitely i do want to talk about the, the you know the like i love how you're constantly stressing on the fact that if you're in 11th to 12th standard please like you know we we need to realize that while we felt like adults we weren't and i think kids who are in school yeah. right now and if they're listening to this podcast they need to realize that fine you are an adult and you are a senior but a part of you can still seek help and it's okay to seek help you know and talk to someone and that's and important. yeah and 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 there's so much of life yeah. left there's so much of growth right. left at any given point i don't think anyone should ever think that they have arrived <laughs> like you know you've, you've reached that point and there's nothing more that life can teach you and you know you you no yeah. you will keep growing and it's the most beautiful thing about human beings and human psychology is the capacity we have to grow yeah. so keep growing mm. have room for change whether it's change to yourself or it's change to someone mm. else whether you had a particular opinion today and tomorrow you have something different so if people were like no being gay is super wrong and now after listening to this or they open to the conversation of being like okay there can be an alternative yeah. life this was damn mm-hmm. good also it means that that person opened themselves up to yeah. growth correct what a wonderful message yeah no i think that's 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 supremely important i mean that's what that's been my biggest learning as an mm-hmm. adult and uh, it's one i take forward in every aspect of me whether it's my career or it's my life i don't i don't think i know everything of everything and i don't ever want right. to I want to always be able to mm. learn. Um I, literally to this degree, mm. okay? I've I'm I've been out for 15 years. I've um, um been very public about being out and all of that. Now I'm married to my partner also. This is all lovely mm. lovely. But it took me learning to understand gender fluidity. Right. Yeah. Okay? It took me un- it took me knowing people personally to understand that gender dysphoria is a very real very traumatic thing for a lot of people mm-hmm. and what it entails because again like like I'm in the damn community and I was also like oh man this is a trend that people everyone wants to just be non binary mm-hmm. or everyone wants to just be and you're like no it's not a trend there are people who genuinely feel uncomfortable in the bodies that they've been born yeah. with and you make peace and you make and these are things that need to be addressed because these are things that happen in school it's got nothing to do with being gay yeah, at this yeah. point it's about just being like i'm not comfortable you know girls bodies develop uh, as they the, when they're in school and you go from being flat chested and stuff like that and having to wear your little sports bras and all that and it's a big yeah. change it right is. and some kids some girls hate it mm. they hate it some boys hate mm. it when they suddenly start sprouting facial mm. hair and it's just not anything they imagine themselves to be there needs to be a space to discuss that and to say and i'm 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 insisting mm. on this because the kind of gender dysphoria that i have seen and i have spoken about and i have talked to people about it is heartbreaking mm. it is heartbreaking no one should go through that kind of trauma yeah. because um 
um I, and i would recommend everyone who listens to this to read up on it there's a there was a there was a scientist called kinsey he actually um devised the kinsey scale of sexuality mm-hmm. okay and um i think in the 50s okay. if i'm not mistaken or little earlier mm-hmm. than that um and basically what he did was he created a a, a scale to understand the range of sexuality in a human being because he believed that not every person is either homosexual or heterosexual it's not a black and white right. thing and he found that actually there is a very small number of people so if you look at the scale look at it as black to white hmm. okay an aggregation hmm. um say let's say black is completely hetero white is completely homosexual hmm. whatever right majority of the populace fall in between that yeah okay he's put it down to eight levels there's exclusively heterosexual predominantly heterosexual but incidentally homo mm-hmm. predominantly heterosexual but more than incidentally mm-hmm. homo so it it goes on like that right, right? and so the, there are very few very few people who when they are born and i'm like who those them very very lucky that they are who can wake up and be like yeah no i know i'm completely straight or i know i'm completely gay there's no way i'll ever be uh, involved with or attracted to members of opposite sex or same right. sex based on which side you lie but most of us lie in between Hmm. okay and that's not that doesn't make you weird that doesn't make you freaky that doesn't mean you're desperate and i'm using words i've yeah. heard i'm not i'm not coming up with words off the top of my right. head right it's important that kids understand hmm. it me understanding it at 38 is great it opens up like i have lots of aha moments about my life but when you're a child if you know this that you don't feel like you're weird mm-hmm. like you're like you should just go you know hide yourself in a bush somewhere because you're not worth seeing because you're obviously not normal yeah. you're very very damn normal we are animals we are part of the animal kingdom i'm sorry yeah. but it, it we're not exclusive to uh, experience just because we are uh, on top of the food chain yeah. i think the one thing from all this that i'm gathering is self acceptance cannot be taken lightly self act- acceptance is something which everyone literally should be taught because it's such a tough nut to crack right from the on the onset of it not everybody accepts themselves yeah. you know uh, i know i didn't i know everybody like all of us when we're growing up is so worried about others constantly that self acceptance is something very far away and everything you're speaking of i think it comes from there if we are taught that in school on how to accept self then slowly we begin to accept and get to know everything about ourselves yeah because the thing is we we are a social being yeah. right as 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 human Correct. beings we always have people around us because it it makes our lives better we, it it we're almost like pack yeah. animals if you look at it from the, in the animal uh, we're not we're not isolated animals we are pack animals we need our yeah, pack yeah. right as a result a lot of what you're okay with for yourself is reflected to of what other people in your pack uh, uh, are okay with yep. right or if the major um, opinion in your pack is uh, to do one thing you wouldn't do something necessarily that different just because you need correct. your pack to shake the balance uh, correct but yeah. yeah and to accept yourself you need your pack to accept correct. you so it's a it's a it's a it's a dual yeah, thing yeah. right so yeah self acceptance is huge your pack acceptance is mm. huge and just being kind be kind to yourself be kind to your friend you might not get it just be kind man you have no idea what they're going through like and for yourself be kind to yourself it's okay that this this thing of this it's okay mm. it's so important because we we are so harsh on ourselves yeah. and if you think if you remember what it was like when you were in school um we were brutal we were unforgiving <laughs> when it comes to yes. that yeah we, we were unforgiving yeah. you know you didn't you could mm. not you could not you had to do this you had to do that you had to get the colors you had to do whatever but like we were unforgiving to yeah. ourselves and the, that pressure is insane right. so i i think that definitely needs to be like a safe space outlet that kids can go talk to but also where these these concepts need to be introduced mm. and it needs to be introduced on an everyday by everyone that it's all right that uh you can have a bad day and it, and it's fine you can have a low day and it's fine yeah. it doesn't mean you're a manic depressive but sometimes life is hard and you need a day to just sleep it through because it's your way of coping Correct. having coping mechanisms for trauma or for anxiety or for when we use the word trauma now everyone's like you know like you're you're talking about like a, a stabbing mm. or a, or, or something very major or something yeah. massive yeah. massive right trauma is as simple as i have three assignments due today and a board exam tomorrow and i'm 
freaking out that is also correct. trauma for each person the level of trauma can vary correct yeah yes and and, and every yeah. incident can it it has its own level of trauma the term right. we don't we shouldn't make it such a big deal it's okay you know you have a swimming competition and it's your last chance to and school team to prove that and it, that's a lot of pick and pressure right there that's so much <laughs> that's pressure true. you yeah, know yeah, and yeah. uh and that the pressure is trauma yeah and it's okay i remember i was i, I sang the a uh, western music solo mm. <laughs> for uh, it's okay for inter and house is this terrible... yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> and i got a terrible throat infection mm. literally two days before right. and i mean throat infection like i had phlegm and there was no voice <laughs> and i was squawking okay and the amount of pressure i put on myself yeah. about this is my magnum opus no do you think again yeah. mm. but this is my magnum opus i cannot let the house down i cannot like you know like yeah. and honestly that was adding to the me not being able to get better because i was adding to the hype of i was so scared and i was like shit shit i'm letting so many people down yeah that um, you know and again like those are the moments i i i I was very lucky to be put in the house that I was to have the house mistress. She called me and she gave me like this hot water, honey, tea, ginger thing. Mm. She said to me, "Sir," and I'm like, "I swear, I won't let down." She like, "Sir, will you just shut up? <laughs> It's fine. <laughs> Drink the hot water mm. and honey and lemon, and do not talk. Yeah, till tomorrow morning. Mm. Okay, go back to bed and you sign language or write on sheets of paper if you have to." keep quiet hmm. go to bed wake up tomorrow morning and we'll see and if you still have a th- bad throat and you can't do it big deal hmm. it's okay it's not life and death and i'm like no but you told it no but it is like no it is it's not that yeah. sounds strange that does not sound like the kind of mayo i went to that's amazing like yeah. it's amazing yeah. though yeah Uh, so uh, yeah so I, i have to let a major call out to, to ma'am radhika uh-huh. she was phenomenal and she made my life she was just the most amazing hm to have Aww, so so wonderful uh, ma'am radhika if you're listening to this like <laughs> you made me a stronger person <laughs> wow so nafisa we've spoken about so many things and so many like we've yeah, gone yeah, from yeah. one side to the other and i loved it i absolutely yeah. loved it but we've not spoken about what you do as a as a career person like what i know that you're an artist and i know that uh, currently yeah. you're also a tattoo artist i believe that's right so yeah. tell me what do you do like work wise what do you up so, to <laughs> so i'm a, i'm a visual artist basically i yeah. um i actually graduated in, when i with an undergrad degree in textile design right. and i moved over to illustration i did lots of sort of graphic design thing and i moved over to illustration uh i worked in the field gathering all the experience i could for about 12 years and then i went and did uh, a double masters in spain Right. focusing on on illustration focusing on on narrative illustration and right. comic so graphic novels and things like that <gasps> and um as spain That's was an amazing place to be yeah how was yeah. <laughs> uh and as spain was great also because it as a country it um, uh, homosexuality was made legal in the 70s so to oh. be in a country where it was suddenly it didn't really matter who yeah. you, uh, whether you're gay or not it was so freeing and and honestly you don't realize it till you go somewhere where it is okay you don't realize how many sort of restrictions you put on yourself or how much you cover your own tracks right. till you go to a place where it's completely completely normal where and at any given point in time no gender uh, no assumptions are made right so no right. gender specific pronouns or anything are used even if you are called to a particular event for example it will be you plus one hmm. or you and your partner right. you know like they don't assume what gender or anything is going to be they don't assume that you are if you have a partner you're married there's none of that that happens you know so yeah. um uh, that was that was great hmm. i came back here um because i wanted to try and try and there's just so much to draw in india <laughs> so i want <laughs> to true. i want to come back and um i work from here and uh, i narrowed in on basically only on on uh, visual art and i now work on commission i do architecture i do a lot of uh, wildlife um uh and animals and things like that and um, and then somewhere along last year i started my apprenticeship in a tattoo studio in bangalore called murku studio and um 
and now I work with them as a as a resident artist, a full time resident artist. And um, now that I'm moving to London, hopefully I will find a tough studio that I can work with as a medium. Just this sounds <laughs> super fun. It sounds like a very exciting yeah. journey so far. And going yeah, forward, I think it's just you're just going to bloom and like like you know keep in touch and keep telling us about your journey sure. because it's such. A, I mean, sure. Actually, I yeah. mean, <laughs> if I get to go to uh, Rajasthan or uh, and go to Ajmer. Uh, at some point, I'd love to actually talk to the uh, kids in school, like especially the senior two batches when they're doing their choice of careers, because I want them to understand that uh, it's not it. It actually art is a very it's a very strong option, and the and it's it's huge. You know, it's not there's it's not monodirectional. The 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 variety of things that's offered is huge, Correct. and yeah. Uh, to um yeah so i think um, that'll be wonderful but, and i'm pretty yeah, sure definitely. yeah i'm pretty sure divija and puja the like everybody is going to be connected to you and you know to to make it make that happen so that's really yeah good. yeah i'd love yeah. to i'd love to do it because yeah i mean i know it sounds super fun like tattoo artists like oh my god but <laughs> it's hard work yeah. it's back breaking work but mm. it's very very rewarding and it's a whole different level of validation when someone walks into the studio and says i want your artwork on my body for the rest of my life you know oh, it's wow. like it's a whole different level of validation because we don't do we only do custom pieces we don't do you can't come in with a design and or, or pinterest designs and be like can you do a, like a little heart or something on me we don't do that <laughs> right. unless you have explicit permission from the original artist hmm. we will take your concept and draw it ourselves and each of us in the studio have a different art style so wow. you come in and you choose the style you like and and then you carry like i mean that's amazing i have walking canvases man oh my god <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing that's so super yeah, wonderful that's amazing. that's amazing so yeah now risa you have been absolutely wonderful today you know thank you so much for being so frank and sharing your life so openly you know with no holds barred literally so that said i know for a fact that the good work that you're doing and the way you are so openly sharing your life it is bound to affect people it is bound to bring the change even if slowly but it is bound to bring the change that you're seeking and just overall acceptance of everyone loving and being kinder to everybody not through a norm of gender or sexuality or any other norm which might exist out there yeah. so yeah. it is absolutely wonderful just more power to you keep going the way you're going and in any way if i can be of help if we can as a mayo community can be of any support and assistance just be sure that we are there for you so just call upon us so thank, thank you a, so that much that means a lot as in the whole lot and thank you so much because this chat was it's one of the best i've had uh, in this sort of um, in in this respect and and it wasn't like you want like ooh let's poke at this and see how we can <laughs> what is this weird little uh, semi bit on the ground no uh, so i'm i'm glad i'm glad we could have it because uh, this is this is this is what we need to put forward people have conversations just talk yeah when yeah. you're interested someone else is going to share their life with you so like actually go there without any like um built up uh, preconceived notions or preconceived judgment and be open to someone else's life and they will share it with you correct absolutely so, yeah. i i agree yeah. 100% so once again thank you so much for saying yes thank and so having much. this chat with me no, <laughs> anytime you. anytime thank you thank you bye this podcast is brought to you by mayo girls alumni association if you're a mayo white and wish to participate Email us on mayocollegegirlsalumni@gmail.com.